Welcome, everybody. I've been on a bit of an emotional bender as we are in the winner's semifinals of GSC Invitational 2. This is incredible. Now, I believe that we are still technically in week five, but as you might have already guessed, with the winner's rounds, they will proceed more slowly because they're given more time to play. That's uh, one of the rewards of being on the winner's side. The other one is greater chances of actually making it into the finals or the top three and become one of the one um, money winners. So who is going to be one of the first money winners that you will see here? Because if you make it into winner's finals, I believe that that automatically qualifies you to the losers final so yes you will be a top three i think but as we are now um as things are now we are in top eight actually at the time of recording this i'm a little bit behind and we would technically be a little further than that so i'm not gonna make any more spoilers but I hope you guys have been enjoying until now. I made a slightly different display from before, and I hope you enjoy it. Here we got Alice, who on Discord is known as Rain, and Jirachi. Jirachi has also been in uh, recent SPL tournaments, definitely been playing this year, and he's been doing a good showing so far. So we're going to see how this plays out, and we're going to see how it goes. So we do have a Cloy versus Lax lead. Cloy on Cloy this time around because he Jirachi switches to Cloyster as Alice gets the spikes, but Jirachi also wins a speed tie and dodges two Toxics in a row. Very sneaky. Can be kind of problematic, but in compensation, Alice does get a crit on that Cloyster, evening things out, pretty much putting Jirachi in the same situation as Alice here. A Surf has the potential of putting them in a bad spot. They're just going to boom. There's really no reason to switch out to Risky or just uh, free damage on Gengar if someone should choose to Surf. So just boom. Eggy on uh, T-Tar. Jirachi's going to choose to respect the Eggy. So Eggy could obviously have a Sleep Powder. Would be rather bad to just stay in there. As... Jirachi doubles to Lax on the incoming Raikou and is going to set up with a curse. Now, we have seen some players go with uh, EQ Lax in spite of them having a T-Tar, so we're going to find out if that's the case. No, it would appear that Jirachi has a Mono Lax. He just is going to go for the damage, and still, despite Golem being a perfectly good normal resist, took more than half of its HP away, so... In comes the Burial Mountains, the T-Tar. And uh, fortunately for Alice, she did manage to spin away those spikes. So getting a lot of value out of that Golem. Brings in the Eggy, so probably going to force a switch, maybe explode. Good explosion, good timing. Jirachi was a little bit hesitant, possibly, but can't blame him. In comes Machamp now, so there is some... Uh, some value to be gained from that boom of Eggy because that's a really threatening check for Machamp. Uh, Zapdos misses the two-hit KO threshold while Machamp is very much in a position to two-hit KO uh, the uh, Zap. And everything else is just weak to plus one cross chop. But Golem is faster, so Jirachi doesn't want to lose it to boom. That's his win con. And Zapdos is going to para the Raikou. That's really helpful. T-Tar may come in here, maybe EQ. Um, I definitely don't think Alice would, you know, unless they're, she's going to play out of her mind and go to Zap and try and dodge something. No, she's going to get a, a critting power. Let's call it that, for lack of a better term. Jeez, that came in really clutch. Zapdos is now in a much better spot without the plus one on the Machamp. It's pretty much free to go for Thunder, even at Hidden Power if it wants. Gets a para on what we know not to be Rest Talk Zap. So that's going to stay. That's going to stick. 
and Raik, who's going to come back in, could be Roar. We're going to see right now. There's a good Thunder and another Para. Now the Raikou outspeeds the Machamp. And gone is the second win condition. Rather unfortunate for Jirachi this game one. But we do see Zapdos, so it's, I mean, um, Alakazam. So it's not completely over here. Unfortunate Encore on what was obviously a last Monlax. But, uh, I mean, oof. Okay, that's, that looks like game. There was a really good chance that this Z uh, Zam could have... I keep saying Zapdos. Zam could have actually swept these other three Mons if it hadn't been for the Lax. But that's why we see Machamp. We see Titar. Matter of fact, this makes me think of uh, a friend of mine who brought a team like this. Titar the Dark type. Machamp the Fighting type. And the Psychic type in Alakazam. They have good synergy. Titar and Zam kind of reminds you of black and white overused, but we're in GSC here. Now we're going to switch sides once again. And things played off quite well for Alice that game one. Uh, hopefully for Drachi, there's going to be more leeway. There were... A few unfortunate scenarios. The Exegator lead this time around. Gonna go for Sleep Powder, interestingly enough. Follow up boom. Because, of course, this time Alice is gonna dodge a Toxic. <laughs> is that necessary? We already saw the RNG play in the favor somewhat. But uh, still, both players putting a strong show, giving a strong showing of their capabilities here. Valuing the spike. Some of them value to bring golems so as to, you know, when they get rid of the cloister, there's going to be something to spin away. Others bring their spin blockers like Gengar. This one in particular has Thief and Hypnosis. And is in range of another hit, but is going to put that T-Dar to sleep. Let's see if Alice makes the power move. Nope. I was hoping for a psychological pursuit there, which is the simply the act of clicking pursuit while the opponent switches out and your T-Tar is asleep. And the message pops up anyways that Gengar is about to withdraw, and that's when the moment where they start to have a heart attack because they think, oh shit, he can actually wake up, and then, you know, it either does or doesn't, but it puts that mental damage. It's extremely, extremely valuable. Um, anyways, back to us. Alice preferred to go to Lax on... Uh, Well, probably just trying to take hits from Gengar better, but it turned out to, to be a good play because Vaporeon comes in. And uh, Vaporeon most likely is Rest Talk, but even if it were Acid Armor, I don't think it would be good to use in the mid game, especially with no Zap revealed yet. Gengar coming in, and then Machamp. Gengar is going to boom. Vaporeon will outspeed here, but does it want to? There's clearly going to be a Zapdos in the back. Alice is going to optimize, so sacking the Machamp. They're 2-2 two two with the uh, Titar asleep and the Steelix, who is ready to set the tr to pull the trigger here, should it want to. Body Slam. So it's a Body Slam Steelix. You don't see that every day, but its uh, sole purpose is that of paralyzing the Zapdos so as to enable a sweep for Vaporeon. That or Cloyster, I guess. Cloyster also outspeeds Vaporeon. Good good on Jirachi to just, you know, with you know keep that timing and avoid pulling the trigger too soon. The Titar chance to wake up. Nope. And dies. And Alice is going to lose game two. There's no way out of it. The Steelix is just going to explode. And that's game two. So, imagine if the Zapdos had Protect. 
that would have been rage inducing. So they are both on the board now, one for one. And we're going to see who is going to move on in the winner's black bracket to face off the other challenger in winner's finals. All right. And here we are. Oh, uh, let's try and maintain consistency here. So we got Raikou versus Lax. And Alice is going to straight up go to Fortress here on turn one. Jirachi is going to respect the possibility of a toxic, which is exactly what it reveals to have. Gets a toxic on the cloy, reveals also to have hidden power. So hidden power is good here. Um, with the Fori and the Raikou, I can only imagine that this is a stall team. In fact, we do see a Starmie. So the Starmie is going to be um, in a good position to spin away those spikes. And over the long run, uh, even with this Fortress present, the Cloister is like, you know, hard pressed to try and maintain those spikes and it's poisoned. So as it takes spikes damage and is poisoned, it's really going to be weakened over time. Jirachi doesn't really have many options and he probably already assessed that it was in fact a... Um, stall team that he's facing so we're gonna see how he plays this out and onto the turn and boom oh my okay so that that is something that's crazy boom on the starmie as it comes in basically getting rid of one of the most trickiest mons on a stall team to get rid of uh, in the early game. So, Starmie. That can really enable him a champ sweep. We do see Exeggutor, who is equally threatening, really strong. And Jirachi is going to switch out. So, has a Golem. May have to respect the possibility of Surf. Jirachi does just that. He's going to go to Lax here. And Alice may be free to spin. Going to go for a Toxic instead. Has three moves, so it either has boom or spin. Okay, this is really risky because if that Raikou were parried, it would have been in range of a thunder and would have died, certainly. And we're going to see if it's sleep talk or not. As Drachi manages to spin away the spikes, but they may come right back for E. Toxics the Golem. All right. And a Skarm. Starm Skarm is clearly going to invite Zapdos as it whirlwinds away the Mon. Each time Zapdos comes in, it's going to take toxic damage. So there is some offensive pressure from the Skarmory, believe it or not. Titar going to switch out. And the Snorlax is going to come in. So that's good. And we do see that the Snorlax is Curse. Exeggutor is going to take plus one double edge, so 71%. And we'll pull the trigger to boom. This puts Alice's Titar in a somewhat precarious situation here. We do see the Surf from Jirachi's Titar, which might explain why he respected Alice is in the first place. And so double normal resist. And Golem, who can more freely spin, whereas Titar might be more on the offensive side. So that's interesting. However, his Golem is on a timer, which is going ever so slowly. A little precarious to go for the EQ there, in my opinion. Kind of early... I don't, I don't see Alice wanting to just risk Raikou like that. Zap coming in once again. And we do see the sleep talk on Alice's Raikou. Thunder, miss. Thunder hit. 21. The Thunders are more valuable hitting... Raikou when it is awake than when it's asleep, of course, because of the chance of paralyzing it and just getting a lot 
of opportunities to pressure it with your physical attackers, which Raikou does not love. The lax has been toxic now, and thus far we have not seen any specific coverage, but we'll soon find out if it has it. With uh, rest at the very least, we'll, we'll find out if it's sleep talk. Zapdos, Raikou, Twilight Terror. So Alice is successfully managing to maintain this advantage if she can go on longer. Unfortunate Thunder Miss there because there was always that chance of paralyzing the Raikou and just getting rid of it. The rest of the team, as you see, is very susceptible to electrics. So, yeah. But uh, Alice is maintaining a number advantage and does manage to get those spikes back up, putting just the slightest amount of pressure. The lax does reveal to be curse talk. And Skarmory is going to stay in, possibly whirlwinded out. Raikou, range, miss again. Miss again. So we do see uh, a bit of a twist on this stall team. Uh, Fori and Starmy, but only one spinner. So the spikes are going to be extremely helpful uh, for Jirachi to carry out the game plan that it might need. he might need. He has a Sleep Talker in Zapdos as well as uh, Snorlax. So And manages to spin away the spikes for good. So there is a big advantage on that end. However, the Golem is on a timer. That doesn't change the fact that it's a boom. So there's still you know the chance to just deal some nice damage there. Zapdos. What's the percent on uh, T-Tarn? It's pretty low. Alice is going to come in with her own lax. And this golem is in range. Gets taken out before it can set off a boom. And now a crit rock slide. That's definitely what Jirachi wants to see. Unfortunately, the lax gets sleep talk rest. 51%. That's a lot. <laughs> Drachi with the Surf and the Rock Slide may have uh, also Dynamic Punch on that uh, Tyranitar. Usually you want something more like a Mixed Attacker just to cause havoc. And... There isn't really a way to hurt this Skarmory, though. He doesn't seem to have a way besides Zapdos to break through it. So Alice can essentially stay in, bide some time, and then phase it out whenever she sees fit. Of course, without a curse on the Skarmory, it won't be able to defeat... Oh, it does have curse. Well... I don't think it would be able to defeat Lasma and Lax. Titar. So now we're down four to three. And we see a rest. So this Titar recovered all of that HP back. Essentially, so much of that progress that Jirachi had made has been nullified. With rest. So this team, in case you guys aren't familiar, this team that Alice is using is uh, a take on one of Zakuru's trademark stall teams, which focuses a lot on, well, spikes to be an advantage. But Alice gives her own take, uses some slightly different sets in uh, Skarmory and Fori. So, of course, had Alice managed to spin away those spikes, this might have been a completely different story. The T-Tar finally gets toxic, so now the T-Tar is on a timer. So it's only a matter of, of minutes before it's going to be gone for good. And, well, at that point, 
Jaracha really doesn't have any way besides positional advantage with this Snorlax to win. As you can see here, a lot of double switching. Jirachi calling out these double switches and can essentially stay in and attack since the Skarmory is asleep. And then whenever he needs, he may go to Zap, forcing in Lax and Raikou. So that is the gist of it. Gonna do gonna deal some more damage there. Good job. Not going to zap on that turn, I don't think I agree. Because you want to force the snor uh, the Skarmory out. Like even a crit is not super detrimental. And you need an insane amount of luck for it. Turn 96. And as you can see, this is one of those situ situations where it's very, very hard to break. But even a Thunder could put this Raikou in a really bad spot. Of course, you know, Thunder has to hit. Lax. And now the Raikou is at 50, 22. All right. And even if it rests, that just means Lax can come back in. Even the T-Tar is weakened. And in range of a Thunder right now. Lax. Speaking of which... I wonder if the microphone picked that up. That was a huge thunder I heard just outside right now. At first, I thought it was an explosion. Jeez. Couldn't have asked for a better timing. I don't think it, it picked it up, though. I don't think the mic picked it up. We do see some more switching. The lax on Jirachi's end is paralyzed. And as we already know, the T-Tar on his team is parried. But as long as he keeps doing this... He can technically keep going for a long time. If the spikes were not on Alice's side of the field, well, I would have already called a victory. Like at this, there's not much else Drachi can do. He can find an opportunity, maybe hacks. Has he been hiding a special move with which to hit Skarmory like Fire Blast? Nope. It would appear not that way, so. Okay, well, Jirachi conceded, and Alice will be moving on to, yes, the winner's finals. I won't reveal who is in the winner's finals, at least not in video format, but um, my friend Wholesome Shadow, aka Dance of Hearts, will be covering that game. I believe that he managed to pick it up live, all three of the games or however many um there were i didn't actually see the match myself but i hope you guys enjoyed i know this stall game was a bit long but um it's also you know a bit of a twist alice tailored it to her liking it wasn't exactly the same as as a cruise at least in terms of moveset so anyways stay tuned and enjoy more of this gsc invitational stuff all right bye bye